This is Lori Sheldon, your technology integration coach. Welcome back to the 2021-2022 school year. First of all, I hope you had some time away from your screen to detox and relax a little bit from that. And I do want to commend you sincerely on an amazing job over the course of the last 18 months. You were given a situation that was less than ideal and you did a phenomenal job with it. Some of you might still be twitching a bit from all of the um, Google Classroom and Zooming, and that's completely understandable. One thing that has come out of the, the experience we've gone through is that we now know more about some technology tools we can use with our students. The beauty of that is now we can pick and choose when it's appropriate to use them. You're going to be required to set up a Google, Google Classroom for each of your classes for our remote snow days. You'll get more instruction from your administrators, but as we've learned, Google Classroom is not a bad thing to have in place and have your kids connected to right from the beginning. So some of you don't need this part of the instruction, but I wanted to show you a few new tricks too. In your Google Classroom dashboard, you now have the ability, finally, to drag and drop and organize things. Over here, with what I call the hamburger menu, you have a glance of all of your classes. If you archived something, it's here, and you can still pull assignments from your archived classes. You can delete them from here as well. So for example, this is a class I made that I know I will never ever need again. I can delete it. If I decided I wanted to bring it back from the dead, I could restore it. Once you delete it, it's gone though. So it doesn't hurt to leave things in archive. Just means no changes can be made to it, but the content still sits there. The other thing I wanna bring your attention to is your settings. Just a quick reminder that this is where you can change your profile picture and decide what notifications you would like to receive from Google Classroom. And notice classes you're enrolled in and classes that you teach, you can turn on separate notifications for. So we'll go back here, we'll go back to our classes. And you probably noticed at some point last year this to review showed up. This is just if there was work you needed to look at, it would show up here. And this is the calendar that goes with your Google Classrooms. So I'm going to not bore you with how to create a class because it's click the plus create class and go through that. But I wanted to take a minute in here to show you that we still have the same basic tabs. Stream is for our activity. Classwork is where we post assignments. People is where you will see students and co-teachers. And then there's the grades tab. We didn't heavily use this in the past, but do know that CSIU, our CIS, is working on a way to connect directly to Google Classroom. It's still being tested in some school districts, but it exists. So one thing I wanted to bring up before we get going too far here, the stream tab typically was just used for announcements, but some teachers put everything in the stream. The downside to that is it's a little harder to organize. So in the classwork tab, this is where I can create topics. Topics are like mini bookmarks, and some of us learned that you can get to 100 and then it cuts you off. So you might wanna give some careful thought to your topics. Think of these as file folders. So maybe I have one for homework. Maybe I have one for resources. And then maybe I break things down by unit. What I don't advise is creating one for every week of the school year. That gets a little confusing. Um, that was done out of necessity last year. Um, and hopefully we don't have to revisit it in that way. Notice too that now I can take my topics and I can drag and drop them so I can reorder them. I know, right? Kind of exciting. And if I get multiple items in here, I can drag and drop them within here. So to create anything, I go to the Create tab. One little trick I wanted to show you, and you don't have to do this, this is just something I was thinking about since we've had Google Classroom since 2014, but heavily used it the last two years. 
I like to create a new folder every school year for each Google Classroom. And I'll explain why. I also want to right click on this and give it a color just because it'll draw attention and because it's something I might use a lot I'll add it to my starred which means it's a bookmark I come over here and voila there it is the beautiful thing is and I've already created one for this year let's go here anything that I hope to put in that Google classroom I'm going to put in here first so I have a few PDFs I dragged in here I have a Google Doc um, now, does Google Classroom create a folder for each individual class? Yes. But this is nice because then from year to year, if I quickly want to be able to find something, I don't want to have to sift through that folder Google creates because it has the templates and the student assignments attached. This just, for my brain personally, this helps me. So I thought I would share with you. So in the Classwork tab, this is where I create my assignments. The quiz assignments you could use too. Um, questions, materials, you can reuse posts from previous years, and I have videos created on all of this in the past, so I won't revisit it. Okay, but then one other thing we wanted to take a look at is here, under the gear, Google lets you join students to the class using a link, or using a code, or inviting them by entering their emails. It's best practice now at this point to have them go to Google Classroom on their iPad, put in their code. Unless they're a new student, they're probably already signed into Google Classroom. And that connects them to your class. Something new, some of us use the stream for everything and then it kind of gets bogged down a little bit. If you put something in classwork, it's gonna show on the stream anyway, unless you tell it not to and it's previously showed condensed notifications, you can have it put everything there so that you've got a one-stop shop. But the nice thing apart about using the classwork tab is you can assign things to topics and keep things organized that way. If you do not see this guardian summaries, reach out to me and let me know. It means I need to switch your group on my end. This, if it's enabled, will allow you to invite parents by their email into your Google Classroom. They will not see the contents of your Google Classroom. They will get summaries at the end of the day or the week, whichever they decide to sign up for. Google Meet is something we may have to revisit in the future. It's very much like Zoom, but it's more locked down. And the grading, if you are someone who uses this, um, you already know how. I'm not gonna spend time on there. If I made any changes, I'd need to click on Save. So we do need to set up a Google Classroom. I will attach some best practices if you choose to peruse it, although you're all pretty much experts by now. Um, one thing I did notice is the Google Classroom Drive folder now sits right here on the screen. So again, it creates its own folder for you. I like a little more control and I don't wanna to have to go to Classroom find that particular class and sift through to find my contents. So as usual, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Wishing you the very best this school year.